Hey guys, in today's video, I want to show you how to create this really nice reusable modal component in React, which is actually animated. So you'll see that when I close this, the text will fade out to the right, the backdrop will go clear, and the box will actually shrink. And then when we open it back up again, you can see the text faded in from the right, the box got large again, and the backdrop went, uh, the backdrop got dark again. We're going to be using this library called Frame Emotion, which is really useful for animating just about anything in React. And we're going to be using it to specifically animate the entry and exit of our modal component. Okay guys, so to get started with this, let's head over to codesandbox.io and actually create a new sandbox. We're going to be using the React template. Now the first thing I want to do is actually create the modal component on its own, and then we can animate it. Now I do have another video that covers this in more detail, so I'm going to be skimming over some of the parts and just going through it kind of fast. So if you want to know more about the modal component itself rather than the animation, I recommend watching that video. And then coming back to this since I really want to focus more on the animations in this video. So let's create that component, which I'm just going to call modal. I'm going to put some fragments here, and then we need a couple of a uh, couple of parts to this. So we first want a div for the backdrop. So it's going to be modal backdrop. We next want a div for the for the white box that we saw, which is going to contain our content. So let's say class name, modal content wrapper. And we want one more div, the actual content itself. Class name, modal content. And then within here, I'm just going to first grab the props. And then I'm just going to do props dot children. So now if we actually render that modal, and then let's just say hello world here. You can see we have no styling right now, so let's actually do that. Let's first do the modal backdrop. So this is going to be position fixed. It's going to have a height of 100% viewport height, and a width of 100% viewport width. I'm going to say top zero and the left zero, and then give this a background of black with a opacity of about, let's say 0 0.6. Okay, so we have the backdrop now, and this is fixed, so no matter how far down we scroll, this is always going to be covering the entire page. Um, let's next do the modal contents wrapper. So let's give this a position fixed. Let's give this a width of about 300 pixels and a height of let's say 300 pixels as well. Let's say, let's give us a background of white. And then let's say margin auto and top zero left, let's say bottom zero left zero and right zero. So now it's centered, and it's fine, just give it some padding. Okay, so that's the CSS and the basic um, component here. So the next thing we want to do is actually start animating this. So let's go to, let's grab Framer, uh, Framer Motion. So normally you'd have to do something like MPMI, or you'd have to use Yon to actually install the package, but here we can just add in the dependency by typing in its name, which is Framer Motion. So we want to import motion from Framer Motion. I just want to show you guys um, this little demo they have on the Framer Motion um, website. So here you can see we have this very simple div which is just a box and you can see that it's a motion.div. So here where we import that motion it's a motion.div and they have this animate prop on it which is an object and it contains some um, some parameters. So it has a x value and a y value and we can actually change them and you can see that when we change them it actually animates it for us. You can see it has like a spring-like um, physics-based animation. So heading back to the sandbox, what I want to do is actually convert all of these to a motion.div. And then remember to also do this on the closing tags. Okay, so as you can see, this is actually still the same. Nothing's actually been changed, apart from the fact that now these divs here that we have are actually from motion and they have some additional props. So you saw the animate one that we have here, but I actually, I, I wanna show you guys the initial. So we can do initial, and this is a, um, this accepts object as well. 
very similar to this, except what initial is, it's the state of your DOM node here, of this div here, um, before the animation actually gets started. So what state do we want it to be in initially? Um, in our case, we want it to initially be uh, clear. So we want this to have an opacity of zero, and then we want to fade it in, so we want to animate it to a um, this dark opacity here, this um, dark color here. So what I want to say do is say opacity zero, and you can see this will actually change nothing because we have to say animate. So it's gonna go from zero, and we'll get animated to an opacity of one. So now if I save that and I refresh this, you can see that it's already being animated. Now we're gonna handle the exit a little bit later on, but so just for now we're gonna leave it like this. You can see that it's really simple. We just say initially when um, when this first mounts, we want this to have an opacity of zero. Then we want to animate it to an opacity of one. So this is its um, sort of state when the animation is finished. And then uh, obviously these could be whatever you want. Now there's also an exit prop that we can give to this. Although now because we're only rendering this all the time, it's not going to show. So we're going to skip that for now and come back to it later. So next, let's uh, animate this div here, the, um, the actual white box, the modal content wrapper. So same thing. We're going to say initial. And this is going to be an object. So what I want this to look like initially is I want it to be um, have it give it a scale of zero, and then I want it to um, sort of grow to be a scale of one. So it's going to be initially zero, and I want to animate it to a scale of one. So now if I refresh this, you can see that it's initially zero, and then it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger until it's a fully until it's it's a uh, complete size. So you can see this is really simple. Um, there's a lot of parameters that you can um, that you can actually animate. And anytime any of these values change, it'll, it redoes the animation. So if this was something like um, something like a prop or from a state, then this would um, change. Okay, so next I want to animate the text itself, so the content. So what I'm going to do here, let's just multi-line this. So for this modal content, I want it to start off a little bit to the right. So it's going to be a uh, let's say about 100 pixels on the x-axis move to the right and then I want it to fade in to its normal position uh, and I also want it to change the opacity so I want it to initially be um, empty so initially have an opacity of zero so um, transparent and then gain its full opacity so to do that let's say initial let's so start off by having it at the right so I'm going to say x is going to be 100 and then I want to and you can see right now it's all the way here to the right I'm going to animate it to x is zero, and you can see it uh, animated into place. And you you might have also been able to see there was a little bit of a spring action there. Um, you can actually change that. It's the stiffness, um, but I'm just going to leave it how it is because I think it's quite nice. So if I refresh this, you can see that this um, the opacity goes to one, the box grows, but you don't really see the spring action because this um there's no order to this right now it's all happening at the exact same time so while this is growing this spring action here this movement is also taking place now i want to delay this so a simple way we can do that is well actually first let's give all of these some durations so i'm going to say the animate so i'm going to say transition i'm going to say duration 0 0.3 so this is in um, milliseconds Oh, and I should also say that this here, this X is in pixels by default. So now this is going to have, have a transition duration of three, uh, 0 0.3 seconds. Now I actually want to do the same thing for the, um, for the modal wrapper. So let's do the same thing here. Just copy and paste that. It's exactly the same. So now these two, the growing of the box and the um, dimming of the background is both taking 0 0.3 um, 0 0.3 seconds, sorry. So now we know those two take 0 0.3 seconds. What we want to do is we want to delay this animation by 0 0.3 seconds. So we just say transition delay 0 0.3. So once again, this is in seconds. Now if I save that and I refresh this, you can see it, uh, it does the animation afterwards. So now we can actually see it so just as a clear example between the two. You can see here it's almost already there when it's done, but if we add in that transition and then we refresh it, you can see that it's actually going to the left afterwards. Now one more thing I want to do is the opacity. 
So we can animate multiple um, properties at the exact same time. So here I'm setting the X in the HTTP over here. I'm going to set the opacity to zero. And then when we animate it, I want the X to go to zero, which is where it is by default. And I want to give it an opacity of one. Now if I save this and refresh, you can see that it fades in. Now one more thing I'm going to do is also give this a duration of 0 0.3. And actually, just to really uh, emphasize the uh, the fact that all of this is actually happening at the same time, I'm just going to set it to three, just so you can see that it's actually fading in, and it's uh, jumping and it's moving to the left. Okay, so moving, changing this back to 0 0.3 seconds, we now want to be able to close this. So animation for opening it is done, and regardless of what the content is within this, it will always do the same thing. So even if I change this to like h1 and i refresh it's still animating in no matter what it is so now let's create some state here and actually let's call this open so open and set open and we're going to use state and just for now i'm going to set this to be true so open by default so we need to grab one more thing from motion which is um, animate presence. Now, what animate presence does is that, well, the first thing you have to know is that normally when you conditionally render anything in React, as soon as you're unrendering it, as soon as you're removing it, it actually completely removes the DOM loads. And this can be something you want and it can also be something you don't want. In our case, we don't want it since we don't want to remove these DOM nodes when we're closing the modal, since we still need them for the animation. Uh, but once the animation is over, then we can actually remove them. So, animate presence actually helps us with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of this. Then I'm going to wrap this in animate presence. And what I'm going to do is say open. And then we want to conditionally render this. Um, we want to conditionally render everything. So when this is open, we want to render it. And when it's closed, we don't. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is actually animate to the exits. So we can pass a prop to this called exit. And this also accepts an object, which is very similar to initial and animate. But here we want to specify the um, the properties when it's exiting. So it's final exited state properties. So very similar to initial, um, it's just going to have an opacity of zero. And that's all we want for um, the backdrop. Now, the this div here, so the actual this white box, we want it to go back to a scale of zero. So we're going to say exit scale zero. So this goes to this. So initially it starts off at zero. It becomes uh, full sized. So scale one, and this takes 0 0.3 seconds. And then when this is set to false, so when it's no longer being rendered, it's going to animate this exit part here, which is um, setting it back to zero. And the same thing applies for um, the modal backdrop. Now the exit for the um, actual content itself, I'm going to say exit, give it an object. And I want to give this a X of 100 and a opacity of zero. So the same as initial. Now if we save this, and we also just to test this on the backdrop, if we add in a on click, which is just going to set open to false. If we save that, if we now click on the backdrop, you can see that it instantly closes. So it instantly does the opacity for the background. Um, it shrinks the, the box itself, and it also moves the text to the right. But you'll notice that they all happen simultaneously. So this doesn't move out first or like the order all happens at the same time. And that doesn't look exactly the best. So what I actually want to do is I want to delay the backdrop and the um the box from shrinking and I'm going to opacity zero. Um just until this animation for the content has actually been completed. So until it takes for, for the time it takes for this to animate. The, um, the text moving to the right until that's done, I want it to actually be delayed. So one more thing I'm going to set on this exit is a duration. So we say transition duration. So we have a duration here, but this is for the um, making the text move to the left. But now we want one for move, making the text move back to the right. So these two durations are actually separate. Um, although I want this to also be 0 0.3 uh, seconds. So we know this is going to take 0 0.3 seconds to move to the right and fade out. We want to now set a 0 0.3 second delay on both the box and the backdrop. So on exit, 
I'm going to add in transition, delay, 0.3. This is actually very similar to the animate delay that we have here, except this one is on the exit instead of the animate. Now I'm actually going to copy this and paste it onto the, the modal content wrapper, so the white box. And it's going to go on the exit, and then we can just save that. So now you can see the modals here. We click on the backdrop, the text moves to the right, and then once that, once that is done, then the actual, um, the rest of the animations take place. Okay, so now that all the animation parts are done, let's actually add in the ability for this modal to be opened and closed from our parent component. So um, I'm going to be using forward ref for this. So let's actually copy this entire component. Let's say forward ref, and you have to make sure to import that from React. And let's just paste that in. So you can see it's still the same, except now we get props and we get the ref. Then I'm going to say use imperative handle. So this also needs to be imported from React. And we're going to give it the ref. And we're also going to pass the function here and return an object. So this object will be attached to this ref, which we can access. Uh, in any parent component. I'm just going to say open is set open to true and have this be a function and then close. Well, close is actually going to be the same except it's going to set open to false. So we, now we've attached this object containing these two methods um, on our ref. Let's create a, a modal ref here saying use ref and then we can just say ref is equal to modal ref. Now I know I went through that really fast. I do have another video that actually covers this. So if you guys are interested in this logic here, um, you can watch that video. There'll be a link to it uh, in the description. So now let's just add in a button here called open modal where on click we want to trigger the modal ref dot current dot open. So this one here. So now if we close this modal, we can click the button and it'll open it back up again. Okay, so just to go through this one more time, each section of the modal component. So we have our initial backdrop here, which initially is going to have an opacity of zero. So an opacity of zero, we're just gonna become an opacity of one. That's going to take 0 0.3 seconds. And then when we're closing this, it's going to go back to an opacity of zero. But before it does that, it's actually going to wait 0 0.3 seconds, and then it's going to start the animation. As for the actual box itself, this white box we see here, it initially has a scale of zero. We're going to animate it to a scale of one. That's going to take 0 0.3 seconds as well. And when we're closing it, we're going to go back to a scale of zero. But before we do that, we're once again going to wait 0 0.3 seconds. As for the actual modal content, we initially start off 100 pixels to the right. With an opacity of zero, we change that so we um, we move it back to uh, zero, which is its default place, like how you see it now. We give it an opacity of one. Um, we wait 0 0.3 seconds before we do this, so that way the the backdrop and the box are both uh, have both completed their animations, and this also takes 0 0.3 seconds. And then when we're closing this, we want to move it back to the right 100 pixels and give it an opacity of zero, and this is going to take 0 0.3 seconds. All of this is wrapped within animate presence. So that when we conditionally render and um, when we're conditionally rendering this, it doesn't just remove all the DOM nodes. Instead, what it will do is it will um, finish these animations and then it will remove them. So that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like. If you're looking for more React content, I recommend you, you check out my channel um, and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Bye.